Welcome to this edition of Jacksonville University's The Dolphin Channel News. I'm Shannon Heath. opportunity here at Jacksonville University as a high-profile guest lecturer took to the classroom. JU's Davis College of Business finds itself in the national spotlight today as campus is crawling with anticipation for a very special visit. Chairman of the United States Federal Reserve Ben Bernanke came to Jacksonville University to speak to students from area colleges. The purpose of the chairman's visit? To give expert advice in Dr. Maggie Foley's finance class in the College of Business. Upon entering the room, students found their designated seats and prepared for the lecture. Bernanke then invited students to ask questions which led to an open discussion ranging in topic from the stagnant unemployment rate to big bailouts. The way to stop a panic is to lend freely to uh, institutions that are temporarily illiquid so that they can meet their short-term obligations. The Secret Service even made its appearance on campus today as security for the event was kept tight. From student reporters to national media, anyone who entered needed special clearance. Reporters covering the visit had to pass through the media check-in before entering. The conference room was filled with national and local journalists alike, coming to see the chairman's explanation of the Fed's recently announced spending plan. Students in attendance reeled with excitement over the opportunity to meet the chairman. I was uh, really excited to get this opportunity. You know, it's uh, not every day you get to talk to the uh, the most powerful economist in the world. Uh, it was fascinating to me. I thought it was uh, very interesting how it, he was able to simplify stuff that I found really complicated since I've been studying economics. I had no clue I would get to meet the chairman, and then especially introduce the school. I was definitely definitely excited, and I was honored. To read more about the lecture, visit navigator.ju.edu. The event was carried live on C-SPAN and Bloomberg Television. Class gifts are a tradition here at Jacksonville University, but recently one of the university's <laughs> green dolphins turned up missing, leaving everyone searching. Less than one month ago, this glass dolphin was discovered missing. JU's class of 2009 left their mark on the university's campus with a glass sculpture garden known as the River of Dolphins. The artwork was crafted here on campus by JU's own glass blowing department. A few weeks ago, one of the dolphins disappeared, leaving behind only the base of the sculpture. Only after the university and the Office of Student Life offered amnesty for the return of the dolphin was the dolphin located. For Dean of Students, Dr. Brian Coker, the recovery was a great relief. The dolphin was recovered. We're very thankful to the softball coaches who found it and allowed us to investigate things. And we're thankful to all the students and staff who sent concern. Uh, really says something good about JU, I believe. Thanks, Ashley. The missing green dolphin will soon be returned, joining the other glass sculptures in the River of Dolphins. The cost of attending college continues to steadily rise faster than the rate of inflation. Reporter Alyssa Fernald calculates the details. Recent studies have shown that nearly 50% of all college graduates have student debt, accumulating an average of $24,000. Breanne Simkin, Director of Financial Aid, offers some advice. There becomes a point where you have to do kind of risk evaluation, you know, is it going to pay off, quote unquote, for me to invest in my education? And the answer to that is usually a yes. Um, in this market, you need a degree to really be able to secure a job and a well-paying job. The ideal, though, is to borrow only what you need. Uh, the trend right now, why you're seeing student loan debt climb, is because students are borrowing more than what they really need to get their, their education. So as long as you're wise, it's always worth it investing and borrowing to get your college education. 
Financial aid comes in several different forms, including Stafford loans, Pell grants, Parent Plus loans, and private loans. You know, thinking about it, it's a hard decision to make, but in the long run, as long as I'm getting the degree that I want to ensure that I can pay off those loans. And for the most part, I'm doing pretty well right now, so. While loans may provide easier access to higher education, the loans may also make life post-college more difficult. But the research is clear. Individuals with a college degree earn nearly 90% more in their lifetime than those with a high school diploma. Reporting for the Dolphin Channel News, I'm Alyssa Fernald. Students looking for ways to reduce or manage their debt can visit the Financial Aid Office in the Howard Administration Building. Earlier this semester, JU's student media, including The Navigator, JU 108, and The Dolphin Channel News, traveled to Louisville, Kentucky. A team of 10 students and three professors participated in the week-long event for the National College Media Convention, the largest gathering of media students in the country. With more than 2,000 college students attending the conference, the Galt House Hotel on the Ohio River was buzzing with Cub reporters. While in Louisville, Jacksonville University's student-run newspaper, The Navigator, received national recognition. This is the first time The Navigator has won the Best in Show award at this particular conference. For Senior hey, Rika. and Navigator Business Manager Victoria Smart, the win is the result of a semester-long collaborative effort from everyone on the newspaper's staff. I'm just so proud of everybody pulling together crunch time. It was only our third issue that we won in. The staff stayed late when necessary to meet crucial deadlines and felt the reward of all their hard work and the excitement of the final ceremony. They're sitting there and they're calling names and they're calling names and then all of a sudden we hear the navigator at Jacksonville University and I think I jumped out of my seat. I think I actually did and Rika went up and we were just so ecstatic and honored to represent JU and to have that award be placed on our wall was just... It was such a great feeling. The Navigator releases a new issue every two weeks and can be found in Einstein's, Nellie's, and designated newsstands around campus. The Louisville Slugger Museum, located just off Main Street, broke a record this October with nearly 50,000 visitors in a single month. In 1884, Bud Hillerich created the first of the famous wooden bats for Pete Louisville Slugger Browning of the city's All-American team, the Eclipse. Browning, bearing the brand's namesake, made three hits the next day, and since then, over 100 million bats have been sold to both professional and amateur players. The museum offers tours to the public, featuring the legendary bat's history and manufacturing. The infamous Louisville Slugger, made from fresh timber, primarily from northern white ash grown in New England forests, yields over 1,500 baseball bats each day in the factory. The world's biggest bat, an exact replica of Babe Ruth's, stands over 120 feet tall at the doors of the museum. Inside the museum is an oversized glove created from 450 million year old Kentucky limestone hand carved by Kentucky natives. Visitors can purchase their very own engraved bats in the gift shop. A visit to Kentucky wouldn't be complete without a stop at what some consider the world's most famous racetrack, Churchill Downs. Horse racing and Kentucky go hand in hand, with thoroughbred horses taking center stage. The 200-year-old tradition made Churchill Downs and the Twin Spires home to the Kentucky Derby in 1875. For senior Victoria Evans, visiting the track provided a chance to experience an American tradition. Like It was just really interesting, and we got to learn about just the legacy of it and how all the women that came in with the big hats, and we got to learn about the Secretariat, the Triple Crown winners, and just how exciting it really is, how 100 of the horses were raised in Kentucky. I'm actually from New Hampshire, and one of the Kentucky Derby's winners was raised there, so that was really exciting. Behind the scenes, visitors can tour the stables and see the track from a different perspective. The homecoming festivities ended this month with the announcement of Big Man on Campus and Miss Dolphina, JU's equivalent of homecoming king and queen. This year's Big Man on Campus winner was Clayton Hahn. He is a junior education major from Illinois and is involved in many things on campus, including new student orientation, being a student ambassador, being a lifeguard, and being a member of the Sigma Chi fraternity. Clayton couldn't be any happier about being Big Man on campus. I was really pumped because the year before Big Brother Shadow Sullivan was Big Man on campus. So when I was it, I was I was excited to be able to have a chance to do that. This year's winner of Miss Delfina was Diana Donovan. She is a senior psychology major 
from Vermont and is involved in many things on campus, including new student orientation, being director of Dolphin Productions, and being involved in her sorority, Delta Delta Delta. Diana was very grateful for all the support her friends gave her throughout the competition. I was really excited. It was awesome. A lot of my sisters came out to support me, a lot of the Simakais, and then a lot of non-Greeks and Greek people, too. Um, I thought that there were awesome nominees. I think that it took a lot of courage for us to even get to pass the pageant part and I just really appreciate how everything turned out and all the people and it was a really awesome time. Other standout students have the opportunity to shine in the classroom, on the field, and around campus. Reporter Victoria Evans showcases one of these standout students. At Jacksonville University, Katie Keyes is leaving quite the impression on campus. I like JU mostly because it's the small class sizes and you can walk around campus and everyone says, hey Katie, how you doing today? Today was my birthday and I had like a million people say happy birthday to me today, so that was awesome. By surrounding herself with positivity, Katie's kindness resonates through administrators and staff. I'd say she's one of the most positive people I've ever met, especially with cheerleading and meeting with families on campus for campus tours. She always makes them feel really comfortable. Katie Keys is a fabulous representative of JU. It's students like her to help us succeed. Katie's uh, fabulous on the tour, she's great with the parents, and it's representatives like that that really sell JU. In addition to giving campus tours to future students, Katie spends most of her time in this building studying nursing. The nursing program at JU has changed me completely as a person. My grades and my schooling is the most important thing, and basically setting priorities is what the nursing program has taught me. Keys embraces her position as a leader and envisions her legacy to be positive. Katie has been a good role model because she really influences our team, she's always positive, and she always helps people out when they need it. Katie plans to graduate in the spring of 2012. Reporting for the Dolphin Channel, I'm Victoria Evans. While Katie Keys grabs the attention of JU, the softball team garners national attention. Rebecca Lane takes to the field. JU's softball team is excelling both on and off the field. Under coach Amanda Lahotek's guidance since 2007, the team has been setting records including single season best earned run average and fielding percentage, but their success doesn't stop there. The team's average GPA of 3.475 has landed them a ranking of 12th on the National Fast Pitch Coaches Association academic list, topping schools like Stanford and Ohio State. Coach Lahotek recognizes the importance of her team's education. They are here to play sports, but more importantly, they're here to get their job. So if they don't go to the classroom, um, they're not allowed to participate in practice. They're not allowed to participate on the field because you are a student athlete. You're not an athlete who's a student. It is a uh, privilege, not a right, to be part of the team. The sport is motivation for these players to make the cut and to exceed minimum academic standards. Grades are important to us because if we're not eligible, we can't play. The Swisher Library here on campus is a great place for student athletes to come and focus on their studies. Because they have to do study hours on top of practice, on top of classes. Despite that challenge, the team finished last year with more than 30 wins, a first since 2005, while making time to study even without mandatory study hours. As a matter of fact, tonight we have a study group for humanities and it helps us, you know, get our grades up as a group. Not only does the JU softball team hit the books hard, but they also hit it out of the park. Reporting for the Dolphin Channel, I'm Rebecca Elaine. The Lady Dolphins welcome four new players to the team this year. The Jacksonville India Fest, hosted in Metropolitan Park, gave local residents a better perspective on Indian culture. This year, booths featured Indian cuisine, clothing, jewelry, and art. We love Indian food. Both of us are, uh, my, my wife and I are chefs, and we're vegetarians, so we come here for the food and just the atmosphere to bring him and let him, you know, get some more culture growing up. It's always nice. A variety of dances were performed on stage, representing different regions of India. The event concluded with a Garba dance, which is tradition in Navrati celebration. The Indian uh, dresses, Indian food. Uh, the Jacksonville people and to the fellow Americans. 